Okay friends, today we will be discussing about antiretroviral therapy. The different types of drugs, the side effects and the routes of administration for some. So let us see first of all how does antiretroviral therapy work and what is the mechanism of action. Suppose this is the CD4 cell and this is the virion particle. It will be having GP41 envelope and the site on the CD4 is CC or 5. So this is the portal of entry. So now the drugs called entry inhibitors function here. So first important one acting on GP41 and preventing its inhibition is enfuviritide. Then acting as CC or 5 antagonist and stopping the inhibit entry is Meroviroc. Okay. Suppose if the virion has entered into the cell, it has to get its RNA converted into DNA. This is through reverse transcriptase enzyme. It is RNA dependent DNA polymerase. So friends, remember, reverse transcriptase enzyme is RNA dependent DNA polymerase whereas rifampicin is DNA dependent RNA polymerase. And next, the viral DNA has to get integrated with the host DNA and here integrase inhibitors function. And finally, during the phase of protein synthesis protease inhibitors work. So one is entry, second is reverse transcriptase inhibitors, third one integrase inhibitors, fourth one protease inhibitors. So these are the currently available classes of antiretroviral therapy. Now let us discuss each group in detail. Now for our purpose we will take the first group as reverse transcriptase inhibitors, second will be protease inhibitors, then entry inhibitors and finally integrase inhibitors. So first thing, reverse transcriptase inhibitors. It is again divided into nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. So this is something similar to the genetic material of the virion. This is dissimilar. So this will be through competitive inhibition and usually this will be through uncompetitive inhibition and it will bind to a site called allosteric site. Now coming to nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. First to remember is zilovidin. First know the drug name because nomenclature is also asked a question. The following is an NRTI, the following is an NNRTI, the following is a protease inhibitor. And next coming to diadenosin. Next, stavudin, next, lamivudin, emtricitabin, next is abacavir, and finally, gelcitabin. So, significance of zidovudin. So very very important is its uses and the dose limiting side effect. For this it is bone marrow depression. So there will be anemia, neutropenia and decreased platelet count also. So bone marrow depression, nail hyperpigmentation and also myopathy. So, in Judovidin, it can be 
also use it for post exposure prophylaxis and prevention of vertical transmission from mother to child. Now, diagnosis. So, when you remember diagnosis, it sounds like diabetes. Like diabetes, it can cause, so you know that diabetes, the organ affected is usually pancreas. So, when there is a, some defect in pancreas, diabetes can occur. So, it affects the pancreas, so pancreatitis, like diabetes, it can affect the eye, optic neuritis, and another classical feature of diabetes is peripheral neuropathy. The so same thing, there will be peripheral neuropathy, and it can cause diarrhea, and instead of hyperglycemia, you can remember it having hyperuricemia. Another important thing is, there will be neutropenia not anemia. So the those limiting side effect of diagnosis is pancreatitis. Coming to stavudin. For stavudin, the dose limiting side effect is peripheral neuropathy. And also it can cause pancreatitis. Two more important side effects is lactic acidosis and it will cause maximum lipodystrophy. So when coming to stavudin, remember the dose limiting side effect is peripheral neuropathy. It can cause pancreatitis and also lactic maximum lactic acidosis and lipodystrophy. Now coming to the drugs with less side effects. So less side effects, remember less L for lamivudine, E for emtricital. Coming to avocado. First thing to remember about avocavir is, though it sounds like a protease inhibitor, it is not a protease inhibitor. So there will be increased risk of myocardial infarction and very very important thing is fatal hypersensitivity reaction with HLA-B5701 allele. So definitely when you are going to start Abacavir, HLA typing has to be done mandatory. So this was previously asked. HLA typing is mandatory for Abacavir. Dose limiting side effect for diagnosis. Dose limiting side effect of Stavudin, the drug which causes maximum lactic acidosis. Now coming to Gelsitabin. Gelsitabin sounds like something like Gelosil. So something related to oral cavity. So it has a specific side effect called oral stomatitis. It is the least potent drug in this group. Also remember it will also cause pancreatitis plus peripheral neuropathy. So these are the drugs in detail. Zidovudin, Dirinosin, Stavudin, Lamivudin and Emcricitabin, Abacavir, Gelsitabin. So again, to remember about NRTI, so these drugs, NRTI, are excreted to renal. So it is renal root. So these are the specific side effects. So as it inhibits the DNA polymerase, sometimes it can also inhibit the mammalian DNA polymerase in mitochondria, causing lactic acidosis. So lactic acidosis will be the specific side effect for NRTA. So this completes the group NRTA. So coming to the next group, it is nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor nothing significant just remember tenofovir is so the following is a nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitor tenofovir tenofovir is nrti or nnrti or ntrti protease inhibitor answer will be it is ntrti next coming to 
and an RTA. So we have seen in reverse transcriptase inhibitors three groups, an RTA, NTRTA, and an NRTA. So this NNRTI is the end group in reverse transcriptase inhibitors. So remember the word end. So the drugs are Ipavirins, Itravirin, and for Nivaraptin, and D for Dilavirin. So they can ask Dilavirin is if avarins is. Remember that if avarins epileptic neurotoxic. So remember E for E epilepsy, so it can be neurotoxic. And how should you remember the side effects? So here there is NTR, now here there will be ANR. So remember side effects as ANR. A for we have discussed as it is non-competitive inhibition, it binds to allosteric site and for nivirapine. So it can cause necrolysis, another N, necrolysis. Another N is it can be given to neonates. So remember it can cause SJS, nivirapine can cause SJS and PN, toxic epidermal necrolysis. And R for rash and Resistance is rapid to these drugs. Now coming to discuss regarding vertical transmission of HIV, so nivirapine and zidovidin. So zidovidin decreases it to 21.2 percent, nivirapine to 13.4 percent, but Nivirapine has so many side effects. So how is nivirapine administered? So remember, during labor, mother, 200 mg, or you can give to neonate, 2 mg per kg within 72 hours. So this completes the reverse transcriptase inhibitor we have discussed. Nucleoside reverse transcriptase, nucleotide reverse transcriptase, and non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. In this, you can add Rilpivirin. So, this is something recent in an RTI. Coming to the next important group, protease inhibitors. So the mechanism of action is inhibition of post translational. So it is post translational modification of viral proteins. So it is post translational modification and remember the drugs. So I love my country, India, Indinavir. Second one is Ritonavir. Amprinavir. And Posamprinavir. Coming to another important drug, Atazanavir. Tipranavir. So in the novel, it will cause renal stones, crystal urea and also asymptomatic, unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So retinavir, as protease inhibitors are metabolized rapidly, retinavir helps to sustain their levels in the body. So retinavir booster, it acts as a booster usually recommended to all protease inhibitors except nelfinavir. So nelfinavir, remember it has no booster. So no booster is required for nelfinavir. And amprinavir and fosamprinavir. 
So when given with ethanol estradiol, their efficacy decreases. And also remember, this amprenavir can cause Steven Johnson syndrome. Atazanavir, important to remember is, it also can cause asymptomatic unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. So indenavir and atazanavir both can cause asymptomatic unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. And one more important thing to remember is no lipodystrophy. As lactic acidosis is a common side effect to all NRTIs, lipodystrophy is a common side effect of protease inhibitors. So no lipodystrophy is seen in atazanavir. And tipranavir. It is non-peptidic protease inhibitor. So this completes protease inhibitors. Important to remember is regarding atazanavir and nelfinavir. Now coming to entry inhibitors. We have discussed n viritide. So it is nothing but envelope fusion virion inhibition. So inhibition of fusion. So one more important thing is it is given subcutaneous route. So there can be injection site reactions. And Maroviro. So CCR5 antagonist. And fourth one, integrase inhibitors. Example is Raltic gravel. So one thing you have to remember about protease inhibitors, they cause a spectrum of disease consisting of hyperlipidemia, hypercholesterolemia with altered fat distribution, insulin resistance. So this is lipodystrophy syndrome. So usually we have discussed the generalized side effect of all protease inhibitors is lipodystrophy except atazanavir. And also you have to remember that Pesmorelin can be given to decrease the amount of abdominal fat in patients with lipodystrophy due to protease inhibitors. Next, another frequently asked question is, the following drugs should not be given together. There are four such combinations. First thing is Zidovidin and Stavudin. So remember like this, Z symbols like this and S appears like this. So both in opposite direction. Then next thing is Atazanavir and Indinavir should not be given together as both can cause unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. And very important thing is you should also not give Lamavudin and Gelsitavir and also a didenosin or stavudin with gelsitabin should also not to be given. Here the reason is you know this will cause pancreatitis, this will cause peripheral neuropathy. Gelsitabin can cause both pancreatitis and peripheral neuropathy. So lamavudin and gelsitabin. So remember this as a La Moudin LA, Gel C, Lazy. So it is a lazy combination. So actually ZNS and La Moudin and Gel C tabin will function as mutual antagonist. So Zidovidin and Stavidin not together, Atazinavir and Indinavir not together, lazy combination, La Moudin and Z, Gelucil and Gel C tabin. And finally Didenosin and Stavidin should not be given together with Gel C tabin. So remember, a question paper without questions on antiretroviral therapy will not be there. Definitely you can score one or two marks by 
studying anti-retroviral therapy. So I have tried to present it in a lucid manner.